On Saturday, August 3rd, Elvis fans gathered on the grounds of Canterbury Village for Elvis Fest. Five award-winning tribute artists, all from Michigan, represented Elvis from various periods throughout his career. Chris Solano of Ann Arbor performed hits from the mid-50s when Elvis was still recording at Sun Studio in Memphis. Chris told me he was singing along with Elvis' songs since he was a kid and got his first paid gig as a tribute artist in 2001. Well, you know, your ego gets into it for sure. And uh, when, when people just love what you're doing, you just can't help but try to give them more. So it's really a, a communication going on there. And, uh, you know, they love what you're doing, you're trying to do what they love. That's what goes through my mind. The other thing is, is really important is, am I bringing back the feelings uh, from that wonderful 50s Elvis music that I got when I first listened to it and that I, that I get when I listen to it all the time. So I'm trying to just bring back the fun of Elvis music. Dan and Melissa Valk had just gotten married at the chapel at Canterbury Village when they came over to enjoy Elvis Fest before the reception. Solano called the newlyweds up on stage and serenaded them with I Was The One, creating a lasting wedding day memory. I was the one. Hey man, congratulations to you. A wonderful coincidence and definitely love the gang. <laughs> so talk about being up there. Uh, that was a pretty special moment. Talk about how that happened. Uh, I have no idea, but it was just wonderful. <laughs> Serendipity. <laughs> it was meant to be. Yes, very much so. Well, don't you ever kiss me once, kiss me twice. Oh, and treat me nice. Irv Cass of Fenton has been performing as Elvis for 20 years, almost as long as Elvis's entire career. He told me his mother is responsible for introducing him to Elvis's music and began his professional career as a tribute artist after he won a contest in South Bend, Indiana. I asked him what it's like to channel Elvis in front of a live audience. Well, you know, it tickles me, you know, because we're we're just a bunch of fakes, you know. <laughs> we're just fake Elvis's man, but uh, it tickles me. I get I get a I don't really uh, look at it from an arrogant point of view, because I know it's just a, it's just a it's the whole thing is just fun. It's all for fun, bringing back memories of Elvis. And like I said, we're we're just doing a tribute to his music. So, but the, if the fans enjoy it, that's what it's all about. Oh, it's a one full of money. In 2004, Chris Ayotte of Canton was dared to enter a contest at the Michigan Elvis Fest in Ypsilanti and won. Today he dons a black leather outfit to perform songs from the Elvis TV special, now fondly remembered as the 68 Comeback Special. Well, personally, I think it, it really is indicative of the transformation that was help, happening in Elvis's career and his life at the time. And what I loved about that special was the director in particular, Steve Bender, understood that we needed to get back to the, to the roots of who Elvis Presley was. That was the era after the movies, uh, as you know, and Elvis was growing tired of the scripts and you know everything they were making him do and singing the songs that they were making him sing. And so the comeback special really became an opportunity for Elvis to break out. And uh, what I loved about the response and the coverage actually from the media from that special, one of the writers said, Elvis bled the music. And that is so true. Anybody who watches the 68 comeback in his striking black leather uh, knows that that's Elvis Presley in the truest, most genuine, authentic form. And that just inspires me. In the 80s, Greg Jikwa of Allen Park played guitar behind an Elvis tribute artist before deciding to don the sideburns himself. I asked him why he chose to embody the 70s era Elvis in all his sequin jumpsuit glory. Oh, see, 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 see what you have done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, a waistline wouldn't work out with the. Uh, Actually, when I was when I was uh, 40 pounds heavier than this, was when I started doing it, and so 
everybody knows that skinny little Elvis didn't start out in 1956 weighing 260 pounds. So, <laughs> so uh, I kind of dispense with that. Besides, you know, Jumpsuit Era, he did, redid all those songs, so there are 70s versions of them. And uh, I just felt I felt more comfortable in the jumpsuit, you know, with my weight the way it was. I, I'm, I'm, I've been losing quite a bit. And so uh, another 25, 30 pounds, we're going black letter, baby. Yeah? Yeah. One last thing, when, you, when you're out on stage, is it as fun as it looks up there? What's Getting the reaction from the, the crowd, specifically the women, what's it like up there on, on stage having fun? Oh, it is murder. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. No, it's fantastic. It's, it's just as, as great as you think it would be. I mean, you've got the greatest fans in the world. Um, you're paying tribute to the greatest entertainer in the world. And hopefully you do a good job at it. And you just, it, you feed off them, they feed off you. And it's like, it's just like, uh, it's like a family reunion and a, a party at the same time. It's just fantastic. The king may be gone, but his legend lives on through his music and the performers who continue to introduce Elvis to a new generation of fans. In Orion Township, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ON TV News. Thank you.